Now that we've defined what a coset is, let's start looking at some properties. If you've got a group element A, then that A has to be in the coset of multiplying on the left by A. If you've got a coset, and that comes out to be the subgroup itself, that can only ever happen when that element was in the subgroup. We've got an associative kind of property for cosets. Now, those three properties, I think you should look at, I think you should try to prove yourself. They're all fairly basic if you go back to what the definition of a coset actually is. The two that I really want to focus on here are this four and five. Let's we'll start with number four. AH equals BH, two left cosets are the same, if and only if the element A is in the coset BH. Because it's an if and only if statement, there's really two things to prove. We need to prove if AH equals BH, then A is in BH. And the other thing we have to show is if A is in BH, then AH equals BH. Let's start with this one. So we assume AH is equal to BH. Well, then notice that A, just the element A, is equal to A times E by our group properties and by what an identity is. So that's A times an element of H. So A has to be in AH. But then that says then that A is in BH because AH and BH are the same thing. So if AH equals BH, A has to be in BH. Very simple. The other one's just a little bit trickier. So we're going to assume that A is in BH. So by definition, that means that A has to equal B times H for some B, uh, for some H in H. So then the coset of multiplying on the left by A has to equal BHH because it's the same thing. A is equal to BH, so multiplying, we have to be getting the same coset. But let's think about it this way. We've got B times HH. And notice, again, H is in H, and H is a subgroup. So if we think about our properties of, of groups, that must mean that that coset, H times H, has to be just H. So there we go. We've proven both directions. So it must mean that AH equals BH if and only if A is in BH. Now on five, that's kind of a direct consequence of what we just did. We just showed that kind of if there's a single element that those two things share, they have to be the same group, the same coset. So if their intersection is not empty, then they have to be the same coset. That's another way of just saying that either they're the same coset or their intersection is empty. All the other ones aren't necessarily trivial, but they're not as important as those two properties right there. Those are the ones that we're going to use over and over again.